In section 5.3, we are multiplying polynomials. The learning objectives are to multiply monomials, use a distributive property to multiply polynomials, and multiply polynomials vertically. Let's multiply the following monomials. We begin with 4x to the third times 2x to the sixth. When we're multiplying monomials together, we begin with Multiplying the coefficients together, so 4x to the third times 2x to the sixth is going to be 4 times 2, and then we're going to multiply the basis, the variables with the same basis together, x to the third times x to the sixth, and using the laws of exponents that we used in the previous section, we can combine those. When we multiply 4 times 2, we get 8, then x to the third times x to the sixth. When we multiply here, we're using the product rule where we're adding the exponents together. So our solution is 8x to the 3 plus 6 power, or the ninth power, which simplifies to 8x to the ninth power. Okay, for the second one, we're multiplying these two monomials together, negative 3t to the fourth times 5t to the third. We're gonna multiply the coefficients, negative 3 times 5, and we're going to multiply the variables t to the fourth times t to the third. When we multiply negative 3 times 5, we get negative 15. And t to the fourth times t to the third, we're going to, we're going to add those exponents together, add 4 plus 3, so that our final answer is negative 15 t to the seventh power. In part c, we're going to multiply the two monomials. We begin by multiplying the coefficients, negative 4.2 times 5.1, and then we multiply the variables x to the third times x to the fifth. Negative 4.2 times 4.1 is negative 21.42, and x to the third times x to the fifth is x to the three plus five exponent, which we can simplify to 21.42 times x to the eighth power. For example, D, we have negative 2 sevenths a to the fourth times 7 eighths a to the seventh. We begin by multiplying the coefficients, negative 2 over 7 times 7 over 8, and then we multiply the variables a to the fourth times a to the seventh. When we multiply negative 2 sevenths times 7 eighths, it's negative 14 over 56 and a to the fourth times a to the seventh, we're gonna add those exponents together. We can simplify the fraction negative 14 over 56 by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 14, and that is reduced to negative 1 fourth, and a to the fourth plus seven is a to the 11th power. So our final answer is negative 1 fourth a to the 11th power. Let's multiply the monomial by the polynomial. Here we use the distributive property. We're going to be multiplying 5a times the entire quantity, negative 12a minus six. We're gonna multiply 5a times the first term and 5a times the second term. So when we do that, we get 5a times a negative 12a minus 5a times six. Now let's simplify. Five times negative 12 is negative 60 and a to the first times a to the first is a to the second, minus five times six is 30 a. So our solution, negative 60 a squared minus 30 a. For part b, we're going to multiply the monomial, four x to the third, by the binomial, negative seven x plus one. We'll be using the distributive property, multiplying four x to the third times a negative seven x and 4x to the third times one. We're gonna add those together. So let's simplify the, the first term. 4x to the third times negative seven x is negative four times negative seven or negative 28. And x to the third times x to the first, we add those exponents together to get x to the fourth. And then 4x to the third times one is simply 4x to the third. So our answer is negative 28 x to the fourth plus 4x to the third. Let's multiply negative 6y to the fifth times
times the quantity 8y to the fourth minus 12y squared. Again, we are using the distributive property, multiplying negative 6y to the fifth times 8y to the fourth minus that negative 6y to the fifth times 12y to the second. Be careful with the negative signs. Let's multiply negative 6 times 8, the coefficients, to get negative 48. And y to the fifth times y to the fourth, we add those exponents together to get y to the ninth. Now we multiply 6 times 12, which is 72, this minus a negative. We get a plus 72. And y to the fifth times y to the second, we add 5 and 2 together to get y to the seventh. So our answer is negative 48, y to the ninth, plus 72, y to the seventh. In the example D, we're multiplying 3ab to the seventh times the quantity 3ab cubed minus 12b squared minus 4a. We're using the distributive property, multiplying 3ab to the seventh times each of those terms inside the parentheses. So let's begin with 3ab to the seventh times 3ab to the third minus 3ab to the seventh times 12b to the second minus 3ab to the seventh times 4a. Let's multiply the coefficients. 3 times 3 is 9. a times a, that's a to the first times a to the first is a to the second. And then b times to the seventh times b to the third is b to the tenth power. Let's work on the second term. We're so multiplying 3ab to the seventh times 12b squared. So 3 times 12 is 36. a, b to the seventh times b to the second is b to the ninth. And then our last term, 3ab to the seventh times 4a. 3 times 4 is 12. a times a is a squared times b to the seventh. So our final answer is 9a squared b to the 10th minus 36ab to the 9th minus 12a squared b to the 7th. In these examples, we're multiplying two binomials together. We are going to be using the distributive property, but we need to do it twice. So one way to think about this is to use the FOIL method, where the F stands for the first terms. O stands for the outer terms, or outside terms. I stands for the inside terms, and L stands for the last term. So we like to do the FOIL method when we're multiplying two binomials together. Let's look at the first, the outer, the inner, and the last. Using the FOIL method of multiplying two binomials together, the x times the x, that's going to be our first term. So x times x is x squared. The outer term is x, the x times the minus 5, or minus 5x. The inner term is the plus 3 times the x, or plus 3x. And then the last terms is 3 times the negative 5, which is negative 15. So you can write that as x squared minus 5x plus 3x minus 15. That's important when you're using FOIL to, is to check to see if you can combine any like terms. And the middle two terms here can be simplified because those are like terms. We can write our answer as x squared minus 5x plus 3x is minus 2x minus 15. So our solution here when we multiply the quantity x plus 3 times x minus 5 we get x squared minus 2x minus 15. Let's look at the second example. Here, instead of writing FOIL vertically and writing the separate terms, we'll be writing it side by side so that we can begin our FOIL process. 3x squared times 2x to the third. 3x squared times 2x to the third. And then our outer, we're going to do plus 3x squared times 5. Our inner is negative 4 times 2x to the third. And then the last is going to be the negative 4 times 5. Now we can simplify each of those terms. 
3x squared times 2x cubed, multiplying the first terms together, 3 times 2 is 6. x squared times x to the third is x to the fifth. Remember, we add those exponents together. Plus 3x squared times 5, and that is 3 times 5 is 15x squared. The next term is minus 4 times 2, so it's going to be minus 8x to the third, minus 4 times 5, which is 20. Now we check to see if we can combine any like terms. There are no like terms, so it's standard to write your answer in descending powers. So we can write our answer as 6x to the fifth, minus 8x to the third, plus 15x squared, minus 20. So that's using the FOIL process, writing each the FOIL first, the outer, the inner, and the last, and then combining any like terms or rearranging the terms if ne needed. Let's do example G right below here. So in example G, I have the quantity x plus 3 fourths raised to the second power. And that can be written as x plus 3 fourths times x plus 3 fourths. Then it's set up so that we can use the FOIL process. The first terms we're multiplying together, x times x, the outer, x times 3 fourths plus 3 fourths times x, the inner 3 fourths times x plus 3 fourths x, and then the last term 3 fourths times 3 fourths is 3 fourths times 3 fourths, which will simplify those. So we can simplify x times x is x squared, 3 fourths x plus 3 fourths x. We can combine those two terms in our next step because those are like terms. And 3 fourths times 3 fourths is 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. Now we can combine those middle two terms to get our final answer. x squared plus 3 fourths x plus 3 fourths x. That is 6 over 4x plus 9 over 16. And then we can simplify this just one more step because 6 over 4 is the same as 3 over 2. So we can write this as x squared plus 3 over 2x plus 9 over 16. That's our final answer. Now let's move on to letter H. We're doing the FOIL method. The first one times, okay, sorry, we're multiplying the quantity 1 minus 5x times the quantity 2 minus 3x. So our first, that's going to be, multiply the first term times the first term is going to be 1 times 2. The outer is multiply 1 times 3x, and that's going to be a negative, 1 times 3x. And then the inner is multiplying negative 5x times 2. And then our last term is multiplying this negative 5x times a negative 3x. When we simplify, 1 times 2 is 2, uh, minus 1 times 3x is a uh, minus 3x, minus 5x times 2 is minus 10x, and this negative 5x times a negative 3x is a positive 15x squared. We can combine those middle two terms to get 2 minus 13x plus 15x squared. And then we could even write it in descending orders, uh, descending powers. So we can write this as 15x squared minus 13x plus 2. That's our final answer when we're using the FOIL method, which is really using the distributive property twice. In example I, we have the quantity y minus 12 times the quantity y squared plus 6y minus 3. The FOIL method isn't going to work here because we've got two terms. Uh, binomial times a trinomial. So we are going to use a distributive property twice. First we're going to distribute y times each term in the second polynomial and then we're going to multiply negative 12 times each term in the polynomial and then we're going to combine any like terms. So we begin with y times y squared plus y times 6y minus y times 3 
and then I'm going to multiply the negative 12 times y squared. I'm running out of space, so I'll do it just below. Negative 12 y squared, or negative 12 times y squared, uh, negative 12 times 6y, and negative 12 times negative 3. We're going to simplify each term and then combine like terms. y times y squared is y to the third, y times 6y is 6y squared, um, minus y times 3 is minus 3y, uh, negative 12 times y squared is minus 12y squared, negative 12 times 6 is 6y is negative 72y, and then 12 times 3 is 36. That's going to be a positive because it's a negative 12 times a negative 3. Now we can combine any like terms. I see that we have the y cubed is the only term that has a power of 3, so we're going to leave that alone. This y squared, 6y squared, and the minus 12y squared, those are like terms. We'll combine those, and we see the negative 3y and the minus 72y are like terms, so we're going to combine those. So we'll begin with y to the third. Uh, 6y squared minus 12y squared is negative 6y squared. The minus 3y minus 72y is minus 75y and then plus 36. So our final answer is y to the third minus 6y squared minus 75y plus 36. In the next example, we have the quantity x minus 8 times the quantity 4 minus 5x minus x squared. We're using the distributive property. The FOIA method doesn't work. That only works when you have a binomial times a binomial. So we're going to use the distributive property twice. We're going to multiply x times 4, x times minus 5x, and x times x squared. And then we'll multiply this negative 8 times 4, negative 8 times negative 5x, and negative 8 times negative x squared. We're using the distributive property twice. So x times 4, we can write that as 4x. x times this negative 5x is minus 5x squared. x times negative x squared is negative x to the third. And then when we multiply by negative 8 times each term in the second polynomial, negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. Negative 8 times negative 5x is plus 40x, negative 8 times negative x squared is going to be a positive 8x squared. We can list those out, our terms, beginning with 4x minus 5x squared minus x to the third, minus 32 plus 40x plus 8x squared. Combining like terms, and I like to lead with the um, highest exponent, I see we have a negative x to the third. There are no other cubed terms there, so nothing to combine it with. Then we have this uh, minus 5x squared along with this plus 8x squared. We can combine those to get plus 3x squared. And then we have our x terms, which we have a plus 4x. 4x and a plus a 40x, we can combine those to get plus 44x, and then the last constant is minus 32. So our answer is negative x to the third plus 3x squared plus 44x minus 32. Example K, we have the entire quantity 8ab minus b all raised to the second power. So we can write this as 8ab minus b times 8ab minus b. Now this is something that you can use the FOIL method with. The first, the outer, the inner, and the last. It's using the distributive property twice. So with our first 8ab times 8ab, 8 times 8 is 64 and a times a is a squared, b times b is b squared. That's our first. The outer is 8ab times this negative b, so it's going to be a negative 8ab squared. The inner 
negative b times 8ab is negative 8ab squared. And then our last is negative b times negative b is going to be a plus b squared. It looks like we can combine the middle two terms because those are like terms. They have the same variables and the same exponents. So that when we simplify by combining those middle two terms, we get 64a squared b squared minus 8 and 8 is 16ab squared plus b squared. Final answer, 64a squared b squared minus 16ab squared plus b squared. In these examples, we're directed to multiply vertically. I'm going to show you a method that's using a grid method, which will end up with this similar result. It allows us to multiply polynomials together. So I'm going to begin by setting up, since I have a binomial times a binomial, I'm going to set this up so that we have a box, a grid that's two um, units in each direction. So the x minus 3y, I'm going to write as x in the first column heading, and then the minus 3y in the second column heading. And then the 4x minus, um, and the minus 5y, the 4x is the first row and heading, and the minus 5y is the second row. We have rows going left to right, columns going up and down. Now when we multiply the number that's in the box, to get the quantity that's in the box, we're going to multiply the x times the 4x to get the quantity there. That's the same thing as multiplying the first times the first. So x times 4x is going to be 4x squared. That's going to go in the first grid box. And then we're going to multiply the 4x oops, 4x times the negative 3y so that's going to be negative 4 times sorry 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 and x times y is xy and now we get to multiply the negative 5y times the x and negative 5y times x is going to be negative 5xy and then our last one is to multiply the negative 5y times the negative 3y and that will give us negative 5 times negative 3 is 15 and y times y is y squared and that's a positive so we can write our answer out using each of those results in the boxes to get 4x squared minus 12xy minus 5xy plus 15y squared. Now notice that the 5xy minus 5xy and the minus 12xy, those are like terms. So we can combine those two so that our answer is 4x squared minus 12xy minus 5xy is minus 17xy plus 15y squared. So again, final answer, 4x squared minus 17xy plus 15y squared. For example b, we are multiplying y minus 2 times 3y squared plus 4y minus 1. So in this case, I want, I want to create a grid box that has six spaces. We can do two columns up and down, three rows, and we have the y and the minus two as heading the first and second column, and then the rows 3y squared, 4y, and minus one. Now we're going to multiply so that we can get what's in the box. Okay, I adjusted the zoom so we can see a little bit clear, more clearly. We're going to multiply the y times 3y squared to get 3y to the third, then the 3y squared times negative 2 to get negative 6y squared, and then we're going to multiply y times 4y to get 4y squared, 
4y times this negative 2 is negative 8y. y times negative 1 is negative y. And negative 2 times this negative 1 is a positive 2. We're going to combine these. If there's any like terms, let's find out. Um, we notice that we have a y squared in this location and a y squared here. These are like terms. We're going to be able to combine those. And we can also see we have the negative 8y and the negative y. Those are going to be like terms, so we can combine those. So our answer is going to be 3y to the third. And then when we combine negative 6y squared and 4y squared, it's going to be minus 2y squared. And then negative 8y and times a negative, I'm sorry, plus a negative y is going to be minus, minus 9y and then plus 2. So our final answer, 3y to the third minus 2y squared minus 9y plus 2. In our last example, we have a trinomial times a trinomial. So we need three rows and three columns. Okay, we're multiplying x squared plus x plus 7 the trinomial x squared plus x plus 7 times the quantity x squared plus x plus 1. Now we're going to multiply to find the values that are in each box. So x squared times x squared is x to the 4. Now x squared times this plus x is going to be a plus x to the 3rd. x squared times plus 7 plus 7x seven squared. Multiplying each of the second, each of the terms by x, we get x times x squared plus x to the third, x times x is plus x squared, x times 7 is plus 7x. Multiplying each one of these terms by 1, we get plus x squared plus x plus 7. Now take a look at the like terms here. That There's only 1x to the fourth, we're not going to combine that with anything else. But we do have an x to the third and an x to the third here. Those are like terms. We also have the plus 7x squared, plus x squared, and plus x squared. Those are like terms. And we also have the plus 7x and the plus x. Those are like terms. And the plus 7 is there's only one constant. So when we combine these, we begin with x to the fourth. And then plus x cubed plus x cubed, that's going to be plus 2x cubed. Uh, combine the x squared terms, that's plus 7x squared plus x squared and plus another x squared, that's plus 9x squared. Combine the x terms, that's plus 7x plus x is plus 8x. And then our constant plus 7. So our solution to this multiplication problem is x to the fourth plus 2x to the third plus 9x squared plus 8x plus 7.